Uh, but before I do, I think congratulations are in order to Mr. May for being the recipient of the 2020 Professional Planner of the Year Award. Congratulations, Mr. May. Thank you, sir. You make us proud. I'm happy oh. to serve. All right. Okay, so I am required to read this prepared message. I am calling this December the 10th, 2020 meeting of the Brockton Planning Board to order. My name is Bob Pelagi, and I am chair of the board. This meeting is being recorded in accordance with the governor's order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, general law, chapter 30, section 20, relating to the 2020 novel uh, coronavirus outbreak emergency. The December 10th, 2020 public meeting of the Brockton Planning Board shall be physically closed to the public to avoid group con congregation. Real-time public participation and comment can be addressed to the planning board utilizing the Zoom virtual meeting software for the remote access. This application will allow users to view the meeting and send a comment or a question to the chair via the question and answer function. Submitted text comments will be read into the re record at the appropriate points in the meeting. For those of you joining us by phone who want to ask a question, press star nine to raise your hand. A copy of the recorded, a copy of the recording and transcript will be posted to the city's webpage within 72 hours. All votes will be done via roll call to ensure count accuracy. Quorum call, uh, let's see, quorum call. Board members, please respond in the affirmative to indicate your attendance at this meeting. Larry Hassan. Here. Tony Gonzalez. Here. Craig Pina. Not in here. attendance at this time. Oh, he's here. here. Oh, he's, he's here. here. Right. Good evening, sir. Happy to have you aboard. He is in the affirmative. Reggie Thomas. Here. And Bob Pelagi is here. With five members voting in the affirmative, I declare we have a quorum. Okay, so moving along the agenda for tonight's meeting. All right, so we have our regular. Uh, Housekeeping items, the uh, administrative items. We've got uh, acceptance of minutes. We've also got, I guess, we have an we have an one A and R plan, uh, subdivision plans, and or lot releases. We'll get to those, and then we have, uh, let's see, uh, eight agenda items. I think three of which have continued. But in any case, just quickly, the eight agenda items for this evening are number one, definitive subdivision property is it. Lot two, Belgravia Avenue, it's a four lot residential subdivision, Silver Engineering, that project has been continued to February the 2nd. Number two, definitive subdivision property is at 678 East Street. It's a two lot subdivision. It's, it's, it's a municipal, uh, multi-municipal subdivision, Brockton and East Bridgewater, but the portion that's in Brockton is a two lot residential subdivision. Uh, that's Benjamin Carroll's the applicant and Munden Engineering is the is the engineer representative. Item three is a preliminary subdivision. Uh, that's map 74 plots 18 Market Street and one minus four Copeland Street is a two lot residential subdivision. That's one torches and land surveys is the surveyor engineer. That has been continued to January the 5th. Item four, preliminary subdivision properties at 42 Quincy Street. It's a five lot residential subdivision. Springfield Ventures Realty Trust is the owner, and that has been continued to January the 5th, 21 as well. Five is a site plan approval. Uh, let's see, the property is at plot 383 Quincy Street. Applicant is Mike Mather. Uh, item six is site plan approval. Property is at 4 Main Street. Retail marijuana applicant is uh, Atlantic. Medicinal Partners representative is attorney Phil Silverman. Item seven, site plan approval. Property is at 440 Means Avenue. Applicant is Champion City Recovery. Representative is Green Seal Environmental. Item eight is site plan approval. Uh, property is at 119-015 uh, Oak Hill Way. Applicant is LJDE, or if you like LDJE, I see it both ways. Uh, represent a strong point engineering. Okay, so we have, does everybody have a copy of the minutes of the November the 4th meeting? And if you, do you have any comments or changes or revisions? 
Uh, motion to approve the minutes as presented. A second, please. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second to approve the minutes. Roll call vote. Craig Pina. Yes. Reggie Thomas. Dan, I was absent. I'm sorry? I was absent last meeting, abstain. Oh, I'm sorry. He's abstaining from the vote. Thank you. Uh, uh, Tony Gonzalez? <clears throat> yes. Larry Hassan? Yes. And Bob Pelagi is a, is a, is a yes, so that, that's approved. And I think, PM, we've got a, um, looks like we've got one A&R. We do. And um, Risa, do you want to take this? Did we lose her? Oh, no, there she is. No, no she's, she's there. She's got on mute. Okay. Sorry. Yeah. So let me pull it up. So, Risa, do you want to make a, a quick presentation on that A&R, please, 76 L Street? Yes. Um, so for 76 South Street, um, the applicant is proposing the division of lot uh, 083, 015, facing Warren Street. And um, the Massachusetts general law, according to chapter 41, section 81P, the require the, I'm gonna read it to you so it makes more sense. The key to the exception for ANR plans is frontage for each lot created. If all lots do not have their requisite frontage, the plan shows a subdivision and must go through the full review process. Um, so the applicant does not meet lot frontage. He's proposing 8750 for lot A and lot B 5925. And this is in the zone R2, which is the, uh, which this frontage is required to be a hundred feet. So basically what he's creating, if I'm, if I'm understanding the point correctly, he's, he's attempting to create through the vehicle of an A&R, two substandard lots, two lots that don't meet the minimum frontage in that zoning district, which is a hundred feet, I believe. Yes, um, this is already an existing conforming lot. Um, but with the propo proposing of dividing the two lots, it makes both the lots non-conforming. Okay. So I think I think the use of the of the attempt of the application of a forty of a of a uh, an A and R plan is the wrong concept. If he's looking to right, this becomes lots. a subdivision. Yeah, he's got to. Uh, yeah, I think he's, it's a, it's a, it's a subdivision. Yes. All right, well, without further ado, well, okay. So does anybody else have any other comments? Any other board members have any Mr. other comments? Yeah, I do have a question. Yes, sir. On the plan that I'm looking at, and they have it noted as lot A um, by you, my- Pardon me, Larry. Uh, okay. Rob, could you please, I'm sorry to interrupt you, Larry. Yep. I'm sorry. Rob, could you bring the plan up on the screen, please? Do you have that ability? Do you have that? Uh, let me see, sir. Hang on just a second. On. I'm almost there. Your time. Patriots don't start till eight. Oh, <clears throat> getting adjourned. There you go. Can you see that, Bob? I Is certainly it, yeah. can. Yes. So, yep. What a. Um, that's an existing property. It's a two family. And where they're looking to make lot B the additional lot, that is a parking lot now, which I'm assuming is for the two families. So if they take away that parking lot, does that do anything to lot A as far as having enough parking for a two family dwelling? That's my question on that too, as well. That's a good observation. It may well, it may well, Larry. Um, that's a great observation. But just conceptually, um, even if you didn't get into the to the weeds of parking, and I think that's a good point. Um, they're using they want they want to use the A and R vehicle to, to to divide the land, and it's not appropriate because yeah. they're, 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 the frontage is a substandard. 
Okay. All right. Well, that's all I had for questions. But he's got. He's got. It does does he say? Oh, he said. Does he say that the lot B is not a building lot? He is, but but lot A is non-conforming now. Also, it doesn't make any difference that he's saying it's not a building lot. It well, does have the lot A. Lot A. Lot A has a hundred. I thought. I'm confused. I thought the I thought the uh, department report said that the. Oh wait, no, it has to because the front door. Okay, the definition of frontage is where if there's an existing building, it's where the front. It's okay. I'm sorry. Yeah, it's where the front door is. You are. Their front. address is 76 South Street. Yes. The yep. front is on South Street. He does have that. He does have the 107 on Warren, but that's not frontage. Right. It's, it's yep. So that that's the good good point on that, Larry. But that's conceptually, this is not an A and R plan. So, um, if nobody else has any other comments, um. I think we need to. Um, I think someone, if someone wants to take action on this, so someone needs to move to require a a full definitive den subdivision and deny that. So yeah, there's a motion. I mean, do we we can't make a motion to deny? Uh, I'd be yes, you can. All right, motion to deny. Well, you, I, I'd rather, I prefer, we, this is, we'll, we'll explain this to you at some other time about motions. You need to make, a, you need, to, that's the reason why the zoning board makes motions in the affirmative with the hopes that it doesn't prevail. You motion don't want to be making a negative motion. So you want to make a motion to approve with the hopes that it doesn't prevail. Motion to approve and hope that it does not prevail. Okay, there's been a motion made to approve with the hopes that it doesn't prevail. Uh, is there a second? Second. Okay, the vote on the roll. Uh, Craig Pina? No. Reggie Thomas? No. Tony Gonzalez? No. Larry Hassan? No. And Bob Pelagia is a no, so it's defeated. Thank you. Um, okay, so do we have any other, oh, we have a lot release you said, Pam, but we can take care of that. I, I do, um, but you had voted to release that at the last meeting. He just had not recorded the documents at that time, and he just got me that information Wednesday. So, like I said, I'll take it home with me and contact you guys to stop by the house. Okay, sounds great. All right, is that would you say that does it for housekeeping? Um, it does. I had nothing else. Wonderful. I appreciate that. Thank you. Okay, so the first agenda item is a public hearing. It's a continuation of a public hearing, and this is a two-lot subdivision in six, at 678 East Street, Brockton. And just to we familiarize everybody, this is the project that goes Brockton into East Bridgewater, and the owner represent the owner is Benjamin Carroll, representative of Munden Engineering. So, and I think we have. Oh, there they are. Good evening, folks. Is there, uh, is your entire team here or are there people still in the attendees section that I need to move over? I think uh, our entire team is here. Yeah, All right, thank you. Uh, Scott Ford for the applicant as well. Is yep. Good evening. Council. Good evening. Okay, so would someone like to make just a brief, uh, just to catch the board up just briefly? Um, I know I know. one of the matters was what was, was resolving the issue with the, the, the court remand. So if someone, Maybe Scott or someone. Yeah, Mr. yeah I'd, I'd be more than happy to. Uh, good evening, uh, uh, members of the board. Scott Ford for the applicant, uh, the Carroll family for the uh, Knights uh, State subdivision. So this has been before the board. I think this is the fourth or fifth hearing. Don't quote me on the, the number. Um, the last hearing, the concerns that the board had uh, had to do with the, um, the previous agreement for judgment and the ability to... Uh, have the board and the applicant uh, agree to amend that judgment. We spoke with the um, um, uh, the uh, legal department with the city and uh, came up with a uh, an agreed upon document, uh, basically agreeing between all the parties that we can agree to amend the judgment between ourselves. So I believe that issue is uh, taken care of to the satisfaction of both the applicant and the law department for the city. Second, there was a question about uh, detail for the uh, underground utilities which uh, GG Munden, our civil engineer, has added to the plan. It shows the detail of location within the utility easement, what's gonna go there, and um, detail concerning the, um, the construction of those utility, utilities uh, you know, to the standards of the, of the utility companies, 
And uh, you know, we believe that the plan um, addresses all the concerns and uh, we would ask that the, uh, the board uh, uh, vote, uh, vote to approve it. All right, thank you. Now we have, um, thank you, Scott. Okay, so we've got, it looks like we were given a note here that we've been asked by the local, the local council to read into the record. I don't know if everybody got a copy of that, but um, she looks like she did this. It's about the 4.30. So, um, Pam, would you, I don't mean to put you on the spot. Would no, you I got it. Okay, thank you. I appreciate it. Um, Save my voice. She said she has spoken with the city engineer and she would like to make the following suggestion. Per the city engineer, the actual radius at which the pavement intersection is achieved must be shown on the plan of the intersection of the proposed road and East Street. A drawing of an angle point intersection at the road is not a radius intersection. And before we get into that, let me just read the rest of it. Um, tonight, the board may be approving a subdivision as shown on the submitted plans. However, nearly all the lots are located in another town. That town's planning board may change what Brockton approves. The applicant may also change their plans for that portion of the development prior to seeking approval, including building an apartment complex. For those reasons, I suggest that the board's decision include a condition that any future changes to the plan approved tonight, any future changes to the plans being approved tonight by East Bridgewater, including increases in, intense, in intensity or density must be review, reviewed and approved by the Brockton Planning Board before work commences. Any approval by the board must, and must be subject to um, an intermunicipal agreement, which would be a condition anyway. Okay, did you, are you, are we all clear with what she's looking for there? I don't think anything is, is, is unreasonable. I mean, is, um, I, I, the language that she's using on the first point, basically she just wants a, a minimum radius. It looks like she wants a minimum radius on the, on the curb line as it meets, as it meets E Street. And the magic number that you want there is 38. You want that, you want that, you want the radius of the curb to be 38 feet. Why 38 feet? Because that's that's the accumulative width of the grass strip plus the plus the plus the sidewalk plus the plus the plus the actual standing granite curb. It's the 38 feet. So you want you want that because you know I don't think you I I quickly looked in there, Gigi. I didn't see you didn't detail the radius of the the radius of the, the curbs at the at the mouth of the subdivision, did you? I didn't see it if you did. Um, the, okay. what we show on the radius is from like from curb to curb edge of pavement is the radius that we show so the grass strip and all that stuff is not um, included there so well, you've got to yes to, to develop the minimum radius the, the grass strip I'm talking about the grass strip if you look at your, if you look at the roadway cross section, the typical Bro city of Brockton roadway cross section, okay, mm -hmm. it's got a grass strip. It's got the, it's got the. I don't. I should open the sheet up again. I got so much stuff on my table. But if you look at a typical roadway cross section, it's got the grass strip. It's got the, it's got a sidewalk, and then it's got the width of the curbing. And that, that total width is eight feet. How do we know that? Because it, 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 it occurs on each side of the roadway. So eight plus eight is sixteen minus fifty gives you 34 feet of paving, right? Yes. So the magic radius that you want on the face of the curve is 38 feet. All you have to do is put 38 feet on the on the thing. If you swung that together in the field, this there was this talk about the possibility of there being a sidewalk built on East Street. So if you you could actually fit that in the field, we can go over that some of the time. But if you swung that together holding the edge of the existing paving on on, on East Street, and, and, the, and the before you set the before you set the curbing, and you swung that together, holding 38 feet, your 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 radius would actually be in the right place if they ever did build. If they ever did did build a sidewalk on East Street, your 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 radius would actually be in the right place to receive a sidewalk on East Street. But in any case, they're looking for a 38 foot radius on the face of that. 
Like it's the only thing it can possibly mean. Anybody else have any other comments on it? That's all I get out of it. And then, and then point number two, I guess, what she, her concern there is that if if we if we give this thing our blessing tonight, and then you move on to East Bridgewater, and for some reason, you know, you you change or some, somehow going forward, the the portion of this project that's in East Bridgewater gets changed from single family development to some other use. She just wants the comfort of knowing that you've got to come back to Brockton if anything changes. I think that's a reasonable request. Yeah, I have no problem with that. Yeah. Yeah. If there's a change in use from like, uh, you know, apartments or something. Absolutely. Yes. If, no, if, you, if you leave the single family concept as much, I understand that we have no control over East Bridgewater, but what she's saying is if you leave the single family concept, because now we feel as though we have a density handle on what's going to go on the, the dead end street and you change that. And let's say, you put up an apartment complex or something. She'd like she'd like to be to be re remanded back to the Brockton Planning Board, which I I don't think is unreasonable. Yeah, no, we're, 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 we're fine with that for changes, you know, for concept and density and you know single family to multi and all that. Yeah. Okay. Then the other thing, the third thing is that is that she's just she's just acknowledging. I think everybody knows it at this point that you need an you need an agreed upon municipal intermunicipal agreement between the two municipalities. And the. Yeah. Mr. Chair, there is some standard language for that that was taken out of the other agreement that um, will be rolled over into this agreement, and I can read what that is. Okay. So it's in the record, but the remainder of the approval, if you vote that way, would be standard conditions. Um, but the developer agrees to seek an intermunicipal agreement for water services and or sewer between the city of Brockton and the town of East Bridgewater approval. This project is contingent upon such intermunicipal agreement being granted by the city of Brockton. Uh, developers to provide the planning board with proof of the recording of the plan. Yeah, that, that's standard. I don't know why I put that in there. The portion of the roadway within the city of Brockton shall remain a private roadway until accepted as a public street in the manner prescribed by statute a homeowners association shall be created to repair and maintain the roadway in common areas. Um, uh, same with streetlights. They become the, uh, the responsibility of the property owner until the street is accepted by the city council. And uh, the detention basin, although these are not in Brockton, so technically it doesn't make any difference. Um, but the standard language that the um, homeowners association or if they're on private property is the responsible party for the maintenance at this point. Like I said, everything else is just standard. And then Pam, just Pam, just for clarity, does the language that you just referred to, does that get added to the plan or does that go on the covenant or something? Or that will go on the uh, approval letter. So there's an approval letter and agreement that will go to Tony Zioli. Yeah. Um, to start their appeal process running. Um, these terms and conditions will be in there along with all the other standard ones. Um, once the appeal period runs, you know, uh, they have two, two towns that are tied together. So it, it's, you can't get one endorsement without the other. So. Okay. But yes, it, in, in normal circumstances, this letter, along with the covenant, would go to the Registry of Deeds. So eventually, yes, that will happen. That will go to the registry and be recorded. All right. Well, uh, do, do uh, let's see. Do the, uh, so what are the conditions? Does any of the board members have any other comments or concerns, questions at this point? Mr. Chairman, if I could ask a question. Yes, sir, please. <clears throat> I, if I, my memory is correct, there was a hydrant on the Brockton side. Is that correct, Gigi? Yes. Where, where is it? Now, I don't think we have a full set of plans, but uh, where is it in relationship to the cul-de-sac that was formed in Brockton? Um, Mr. May, could you bring that sheet up that, that, I don't know what page it is. Do you know what page it is, Gigi? Yeah, I have it up. It's right at the beginning of the cul-de-sac. Is it the utility sheet? 
It's um, right here. Okay. Okay. There it is. Yeah. Yep. Very good. Thank you. Okay. Uh, any other board members have any other comments? No, I, th I think uh, we've 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 gone over this plan many times, and uh, the developers have have made the changes that we've asked them to do. So, uh, if if we're at that point, I'd, I'd be willing to make a motion to approve. Before you make the motion, are there are there any? Um, let's see. Before he makes a motion to approve him, so are there any? Are there any conditions that want to be that want to be blended into the motion to approve? Um, uh, Mr. Chairman. He, yes, sir. Uh, we held the hearing open, um, so there may be some that's right too. wish to be heard. Yes, I, I apologize. That's right, too. This being a public hearing, I forgot about that. Um, so if there are any attendees who wish to testify, please uh, use the raise your hand um, <coughs> process or indicate uh, through raising your hand that you wish to uh, be heard. Yeah, I don't uh, see anybody. If you can't raise your hand, you also have the um, question and answer um, option at the bottom of your screen. It doesn't look. And I do not see any raised hands. You don't have any written messages or anything. No, sir. Okay, can we can we declare that portion of the hearing closed then? You may proceed. All right. Well, hearing no hearing no further input from public input, I'm going to declare that portion of the the hearing closed. Okay. So back to the concept of a motion. Do we want to do we want to blend in any any conditions to the motion? I'd I'd like to make a motion to approve uh, with the stipulation that uh, any changes to the proposed proposed plans in East Bridgewater be represented to the planning board and the other standard conditions. Okay, could could we include also, Craig, maybe maybe the, the notes that came in tonight, the three notes from the city engineer? How about that? Yep. I made my motion as it stands. Okay, someone needs to we want to include those other two points though, Craig. If somebody has to then um, um amend the motion. Amend the motion. Why don't you just retract your motion and just and just include the, include the three points that make your motion to approve, and then include the three the three points that Mr. that the city engineer had forwarded. Can to. you repeat the three points? Okay, just well, the first one was to, to label a radius. The first one was to label the radius on the on the on the on the, on the, on the proposed granite curb at the mouth of the mouth of the subdivision at the opening of the subdivision. The second one was to was to, was that the requirement that the applicant notify notify the planning board, the Brockton planning board, if there are going to be any changes. Like you can modify this way, if there are going to be any changes in density to the East Bridgewater portion of the project. And the third is that they is that they that they file an application for a intermunicipal agreement. Those are important. I, I that's that included my motion would be the. the uh, that they have to come back to us before any changes and the uh, and the standard agreement for the inter intermunicipal agreements. That's already included in my motion. Okay, so you, you got you got the radius in there. No. I'll make a motion to am amend the motion to include the city engineer's comments, along with bringing back the plans if there are any changes. Um, the subsequent planning board meeting at the other town. Okay, that's what I'm looking for. Is there a second? A second that. Okay, we have a motion and a second to approve. Okay, a vote on the, the roll call vote. Uh, Larry Hassan. Yes. Okay. Uh, Tony Gonzalez. Yes. Reggie Thomas. Yes. Craig Pina. Yes. And Bob Pelagi is a yes. So voted. Uh, now, now comes, uh, I guess, uh, security. I'm sorry. There's waivers. Yes, there's waiver requests. Oh, that's right. They've made two waiver requests. One for Granite Curve. 
which the engineering department has um, is opposed to. And the other is the waiver from the radius. Okay, discussion on the motion or either motion. So I guess we'll have to take them separately then. But let's take them separately, the uh, granite curb. Uh, any discussion? I don't think there's any way we can we can waive the granite curb requirement. Um, we we it's the same thing we we require of everybody else. We can't we can't waive it from that. I okay. agree. I agree with that. Is there a motion? Is there a motion to approve the to approve the, the waiver of, of the grant granite curb with a motion to approve it? Not, it does not prevail. Yeah. Is there a second? Second. Roll call vote. Larry Hassan. No. Tony Gonzalez? No. Reggie Thomas? No. Craig Pina? No. And Bob Pelagi is a no. Um, on that note, would you would you please uh, when you before you bring the plan back in for signing while it's on my mind, Gigi, would you take off any reference to uh, to Cape Cod Berm and also add a detail for standing granite because you've got on your detail sheet. Um, you show and on your cross section, you show the berm, and on your detail sheet, you're showing the detail for the berm. So please revise that. And then the second agenda item is the uh, issue they're asking for a waiver for lack of radius at the entrance. Uh, I think we all have discussed that. If there's any more discussion on that, make waiver request. Motion approved. Second. Who seconded that? There is nobody. Mr. Palaji. I didn't. Oh, I, I, I was looking for a second, but. Uh, and someone like the second? Is the chair, I don't want to, I don't want to second. Second. Okay, so you got a motion and a second. Roll call vote. Larry Hassan? So are we, we're, when, when, we're when, approving, when, we're approving, when, the, yes, we're approving the, I believe. Okay. <laughs> the yeah. waiver of the radius. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Didn't we make that a condition? I'm sorry. It's a different condition. No, this is this is a waiver request. Oh, the church, sir. So, so we're asking, looking for uh, your response to the vote, Tony. Um, just repeat what the difference is between the two. Oh, you mean the two the two waiver requests? No, no, the, the waiver for the granite curb. No, 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 no. The radius, the radius. We made the radius a stipulation, a condition, and now we we are approving a waiver to a different. Radius? No, no, no. The, the the condition, the condition that, that that was part of the approval of the subdivision satisfies satisfies the city engineer's request to label the radius to actually put the radius, the the numerical value of the radius on the plan. Okay. okay. Which is different than 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 than. Oh, okay. Know. Waving the, um, the lack of radius at the end opening. Thank you for the clarification. Yes. Yep. So Tony Gonzalez is a yes. Reggie? Yes. Craig Pina? Yes. Bob Pelagi is a yes. Okay. So um, what else? Now we got to go to, I guess we're surety and uh, yes, surety. Did Bob cut out? No, I did not. Um, so, uh, Mr. Uh, Scott, Mr. Ford, um, what what method of surety would you 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 looking for a cash bond or covenant or? Uh, did we cut out? I mean, you no, could. I'm, I'm here. I'm just asking uh, Ben. Cash bond would be fine. Would be. I mean, until you get into if you, until you and, and and unless you get into lot releases, what yeah. you. What you what you what you're on the hook for at the least is cutting into the road. So the road, yeah, yeah. I mean that's the, and then if you're looking for lot releases, then that's another. And they can change this PAM too, right? It's easier to just put it under covenant at this point. But what I'm sorry. It's easier for it to be under covenant. At this point. Okay. The um, process. I have no objection to that then. Okay. So covenant it is. All right. Well, I, is that is that pretty much cover the administrative moving parts, ma'am? Uh yes, it does. 
Yes, we are done. Okay, wonderful. Well, well we appreciate your patience and uh, thank you for working with us and all the great feedback. And I'm sure this is not the last time you'll hear news yeah. on this project. I know it's been a long road, but I think it'll be a fruitful project. I think it's, I think, I think you've got a good project going there, but good luck in, in yeah, any case. It'll, 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 it'll look really nice. So thank you, everyone. Thank you, Mr. Thank Park. you. Have a good evening. Thank, thank you, you very much. Bye-bye. All right. Okay, so we're moving right along from, uh, let's see, those two are uh, continued. So it's item number five is uh, site plan approval. It's property at 383 Quincy Street. Applicant is Mike Mather, I think. The is the engineer on this one? Um, oh, it's it's, it's uh, good evening to Mike and to Azu. Are they there? Yes, they are. Gentlemen, do you have anybody else um, on your team that needs to be moved over? Sorry, I was muted. Uh, Mike Matha Jr. here. John McCluskey is trying to get on right now, but um, he's having an issue with Zoom on his phone. Um, so we do have him on speakerphone with us right now. So you need to, sure. Think about what going through. Yeah, and a lot of stories, of course, they become statistics. We know that blacks and Hispanics now are three times as likely to be So somebody has a uh, speaker uh, or, or uh, got a radio on TV or broadcast oh, going in the background. We need to have that turned off. Uh, can, can you hear them? Is he at the Yes, Azu's on. Okay. Uh, good evening. Good evening, Azu. Good evening, Mr. Chairman. Good evening, sir. Uh, would you would you care to just walk, just basically uh, give a little a little thumbnail sketch of what the project involves? I know you've been to tech review and so forth already, but just give us a little thumbnail sketch of what the project in, involves. Can you bring that up on the screen, Mr. May? Well, I I first want to see if Azu has it. Uh, I'm, <laughs> I can uh, probably call it from uh, some of the uh, emails that we sent. I, uh, I assume that your office, I guess, you know what happens when we assume, but I assume that your office has it set up. So Let me see. Um, now, uh, we assume that the applicant is making the presentation. <laughs> okay, hold on a second. Let Hang me on, I got it right here. Just in case. Well, that's why he was the planner of the year, you see? He meant <laughs> oh, yeah. that motion. I thought you it was good that? idea. He never disappoints. No. I do think, though, that's a beautiful side plan. It is. You know who did it? It's beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> Which page would you like me to go to, sir? Okay, so uh, basically, um, if you would go to the uh, sheet, this one here is sheet C2. If you go to the uh, uh, C4, that might uh, have all the uh, relevant information. Yeah, so we can uh, work with this sheet right here. Yes, sir. Let me make that a little bit bigger. If you would center it, Rob, uh, he's got to center it. There you go. Kind of yeah. centered on the page. I'm working on that. So, mm -hmm. Technology is a wonderful thing, isn't it? Perfect. There we go. That gets most of it off. So, yeah, it's perfect. Thanks, Bob. Appreciate it. You did. You definitely. You definitely earned your Plan of the Year award. You absolutely nailed it. And, Thank you, uh, but just remember, I don't have a vote, so. <laughs> <laughs> well, but that, that tells you then that I'm speaking from the heart, and I mean yeah. what I say, okay? All right, so, uh, Mr. Chairman and members of the board, what you have here, I believe that Mr. Mather is on with us. Yes, he is. Yep. So this is a project that has evolved uh, over the last couple of years. Uh, it's a uh, proposed uh, um, 55 and older residential type of use. Uh, 
Uh, we uh, met with the um, uh, late mayor, and we also met with the current mayor, and uh, we obtained input uh, from uh, uh, the planning department. And so this project that you're looking at is a site plan for the development of uh, residential housing uh, with uh, uh, on-site parking, sewer, water. Uh, we got to the Conservation Commission and uh, received their uh, on all conditions. Uh, basically, what you're looking at as a plan that in puts the building pretty much in the middle. It is a two-way entrance, one uh, one-way circulation entrance, but a double parking so that you can pull in, but you have enough aisle uh, aisle width to uh, park and then to continue uh, in a northerly westerly direction to exit the property. Uh, we have two separate water lines, one for regular domestic use, which is labeled at two inches. It says that two inch BW, basically that says domestic, domestic water. And then there was a six inch separate line for fire protection service. Those have to be separate so that you have, you don't have a potential cross contamination and there will be a backflow preventer in the building. Uh, they basically, right now the, the uh, property is totally paved for the most part with a, a small portion of it uh, to the east where you will see individual parking spaces. And then what we have highlighted in yellow, just so that it will make it obvious, is the our stormwater recharge systems that we have proposed to capture and recharge stormwater with an overflow provision that <clears throat> that it discharges into an apron before it makes its way to the wetlands. Uh, under the existing conditions, there are no stormwater treatment units. There are no runoff control. Uh, what you have here is a project that is designed to uh, not only recharge the stormwater, but also the stormwater gets treated when it comes off the parking into uh, what we call storm septers. And then from the uh, from the storm sectors, the clarified water goes into the recharge. And then the excess runoff, and in terms of an emergency provision, then discharges into the apron before it gets to the wetlands. We have we have identified areas for snow storage. We have uh, proposed a uh, location for a dumpster on the, uh, what I call the south, near the southeast corner of the property. And, uh, and uh, we have erosion control proposed around the entire perimeter of the project. And uh, we have established construction sequence uh, for the development of the site. The parking is adequate and it includes handicap parking as required by the Architectural Access Board. Uh, as I noted earlier, we have a, we have a, a approval from the Conservation Commission with an order of conditions for the proposed activities that are within the uh, jurisdiction of the commission. And uh, we've also gone before the Board of Appeals, and uh, we did receive uh, uh, the relevant uh, uh, variances uh, that would allow the project to go forward. And uh, so uh, I believe this project, well, we had a tech review meeting uh, back in October. Uh, items that were raised during the uh, tech review uh, by the DPW, by the fire department, um, we have a, a completely addressed. And uh, we're looking and praying for your approval as well so that uh, this project uh, can get on, get on the way. Very good. Uh, all right, does that conclude your presentation, uh, Azu? Uh, it will. Uh, uh, my wife, uh, 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 a very, very intelligent woman, advised me a long time ago to try to be brief and not listen to myself talk too much. Well, that, that's fine. We appreciate it. So, uh, so uh, uh, while you have that up on the screen, 
Uh, do any of the board members have any questions or concerns? No, I've, I've seen this plan a, a number of times and uh, they've made changes, added additional parking and uh, they've done everything we've asked them to. They've done everything that apparently they've, they've done everything that the CONCOM and that the check review has asked them to do. Uh, the planning department has recommended it for approval. This being a public hearing, is there anybody uh, that is on the call that would like to be heard? Rob May, do you see anybody that need, that wants uh, would like to be heard? Um, let me stop share of the document for just a second. And if there are any attendees wishing to uh, offer testimony, if you could raise your hand, or um, you can also submit questions through the question and answer segment. So attendees, if you would raise your hand. And I do not see any at this time. All right, well, hearing none, I declare that portion of the hearing closed. Um, I guess, uh, I guess we're, there, there are no, there were no other recommendations on the part of the, uh, I don't, let's see, I gotta look at my sheet here to make sure, but I don't think, uh, uh, Raisa, did, were there any other recommendations or concerns that you had relative to this project? Um, no, the site plan satisfies the requirements for site plan approval. Okay. And I'll make a motion to approve site plan approval for 383 Quincy Street. Second. Oh, we've got a we've got a motion and a second. Um, okay, roll call vote. Uh, Larry Hassan. Yes. Tony Gonzalez. Yes. Reggie Thomas. Yes. Craig Pina. Yes. Bob Pelagi is a yes. Uh, anything administratively that you want to add, Pam? Uh, can I just ask who seconded that? Me. Oh, okay. So there was a Tony. Tony. So I, I did get yep. that. <sighs> hang, hang on, please. Yeah. Um. No, they are all set. I'm getting email from somebody who's trying to get into the meeting. So. Um, but no, they are fine. There'll be a two year time limit for completion, which is standard. Okay. Does that, would that, does that conclude that agenda item then? It does. I'm All right. Well, gentlemen, thank you for your appearance. I guess you're all set. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. And uh, happy, uh, Merry Christmas. And happy new year to you all. Stay safe. My thank you. Same to you. Thank and, you. And uh, we'll see you. When we, we'll see you soon when we break ground. <laughs> okay. Okay. Thanks, Have a good one. Bye bye. Thank you. All right. So moving on to agenda item number six. It also is a site plan approval. It's property at Four Main Street. Miss so Miss the one. chair, can you just um hold up for a second? Off for one second. Certainly. You've got somebody that's trying to trying to get into the meeting. I do, um, Rob. I just yeah. sent it to you. Oh, email to me. I just sent it to you because yeah, I sent that <clears throat> it's in the link, and everybody else has tried to been able to get in. Who is that? I don't know. Um, hang on. Let me see. Click sign in to join Zoom. Well, it says click sign in to join. I have to sign, click sign in. Let me see if I can do this another way. Hang on just a second. Well, it's the same link that everybody else is using. Okay, I just sent another invitation to them. So hopefully that will work.
All right. Um, while we're waiting for that to come back. Oh, wait a minute. Is, is there anybody? Phil, um, uh, you, you're representing this case. So let me, um, did you just do, oh, there he is. I'm going to elevate him to panelists. Is there anybody else in attendees who is representing this case? Journey Silverman? Hi. Yes, how are you? Good evening, yes, welcome. Uh, is there anybody else with you or are you the sole I'm participant? Trying to get uh, Steve Perkins on, but I'm having trouble getting my uh, video. There's Mr. Perkins. There we go. And maybe Jeff Perkins as well, if he's there. That's Jeff Perkins. Who there we go. Came in. I do not see a Steve Perkins unless he is Luke T. No, he's not. Okay, then I think it's just Jeff. That's fine. I don't know. Let's go with what we got. Okay. okay. Uh, now, do, do you want about the uh, other? Attempt? I'm going to go check check the email for whoever that was. Councilor Nicastro cannot get in. Is she making? She's making an attempt to. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, that's what she just said. Do you want to send her the new link? I don't know why they can't get in. Um, the only link I have is the one that's unique to me. I've been sending the public link, and that's the one that everybody's been logged in with. Yeah, so I don't know why she hasn't been able to log in. Can you send her the meeting ID? Shouldn't need it, though. If the link doesn't work, the meeting ID will be able to let her in. Um, do you have quick access to that, Risa? Let me look. Oh, there's the... It's on the agenda. Yeah, I'm going to copy that. That whole thing is on the agenda. The ID and the password. Yeah. Copy. My apologies to those who are waiting. I just sent that off to uh, Councilor Nicastro. Here's another one, Rob. Hang on just a second. It says this meeting is for authorized attendees only. Click sign to join to sign into Zoom with an email address. That shouldn't be on this. Oops. 
That is weird because everybody else is getting in. Well, we assume everybody else is getting in. There's somebody else that just got in. The meeting ID didn't work. I know somebody else just popped in. Milton, is there, we've given you permission to talk. Is there something we can help you with? Yes, I tried to call. I've been trying to get in since six o'clock. The, um, the meeting uh, thing says the password is only for authorized users only. Okay, well, you're in now. Sorry about that, sir. Yeah, I got through it, but it's a good walk around on somebody. It's like IT people who got me in. Yeah. I just don't know why get in. It's very troublesome. Uh, yes, that is. Um, we've gotten that report from a couple of people. Um, are you here on a specific case? No, I just wanted to see what's going on. Okay, not a problem then. Thank you for joining us. Sorry about the uh, inconvenience. Uh, Mr. O'Leary has stated that he had to add, enter his personal Zoom password to get in. Um, I do not know why this is having problems. Um, it may be because we changed the date and that may have screwed something up. Right, but everybody else got in. That is true. Um, I don't know why. Using the same link. It's, nobody has a different link. And I have not, I sent the link to Councilor Nicastro, but I have not seen her join the, I, um. I also cut and pasted everything and sent it to her. And I don't know who great guy is. But he's a great guy. Uh, I cut and paste the link to him also. And A-H? I did that also. I don't know who they are. Uh, so it's hard to tell if, well, nobody new has joined. Um, Just that Milton. Right. Yeah. But everybody's used the same link to get in. Oops. There's somebody. Who was that? Who was that? I don't see. It just went from six to seven guests, but I don't see who the seventh person was. Was the next person coming in? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Eric Diaz. Oh, Mr. Diaz has just joined us. Eric. Councilor Nicastro just texted me and said that it keeps asking for a password. Yeah, I got that too. You have to have a Zoom password. Are you, are you, are they clicking in on the right Zoom link? Is, is it? Yeah, it sounds like they have um, panelist links versus attendee links. I'm sending this. This is this is the link that was on the agenda. I just tried that, Rob, on my other computer, and it, it brought me up to you need to sign into Zoom and have a Zoom account, or you can go through Facebook or Google, but um, it the, doesn't bring you directly to the meeting. So it's not the public access then? Yeah, for some reason, it wants you to sign into Zoom. I think that may be the new update. But that's the link I sent you, Ed. Yes, yes. But um, 
I found another link and got in through Rob, so I think I didn't have to sign in. Well, I can send my link. They can all sign in as me. Well, I don't know if they can or not. Um, no. Let me try something else. I'm going to copy the invitation. That is the number that there is no public assets from public notice agenda. Yes, there is. It's right there. I'm resending the new link. If it helps, to the extent that it helps you, uh, usually when I do these in front of various towns, you can click and it brings you right into the meeting. That didn't happen here. Um, I had to put in my email address and then a password, like a personal password that I have for Zoom, which I had to reset because I didn't know what it was because this has never happened before. I think that's what everybody's or these people are experiencing. Okay, I'm sending, I've sent out. Can you see all the, the ones that have come in? There's one, two, three, four, five of them. Five new people have come in. Well, five altogether. No, no, five altogether that need that new link. I've sent it to um, Council Night Castro. I just sent the Zoom link that I just sent. Why? Okay, well, there's the passcode right underneath it. I know. I don't understand. But there's a Joe Vargas. Great guy in AH and um, Council and I Castro. I did Vargas. Okay. Oops. I'm sorry. So I sent to AH, to Joe, to Council and I Castro, to Menstruc E, Inc. And if Councilor Castro or those, one of those people do not log in, we may have to postpone this. Um, I'm going to mute myself so I can yell.
So we don't, Rob? I'm waiting to see if I get an answer back from one of these. So I just get a text that said, um, Eddie, cannot get on Zoom. Is something going on, Angela? I'm not quite sure who Angela is. Well, the, prob the problem is we right now we don't have public access to a public hearing. People that are able to get in, did you guys have to update your Zoom? Did it make you uh, get the new version of Zoom? Well, somebody just got in. Oh, I see. Somebody just got in. Eric. Eric. Hi, guys. Eric. Yeah, I'm here. Were you able to get in using that link? Yeah, I got in using the link on the agenda, and I didn't have to update anything. It just let me right in. And you didn't, you didn't require a password or anything? No password, no. And I probably logged in about 10 or 15 minutes ago. Well, it may be their computers and it may not be our link. Well, we have to be certain that we have open public access because uh, that's what it's all about. Well, let's give it a few more minutes. And Hi. I'm sorry. Um, I don't see Councilor Nye Castro just yet. Um, I'm going to check my email one more time, but if uh, she or somebody else from outside doesn't get in right away, we're going to have to postpone, I think. She texted me and said that uh, he's really trying, but I, I don't understand why it's not coming on. That's what her quote was. But did and then she this person the called... Yeah, because I told her, said, Rob sent you a new link. But then this, this person named Angela is texting me, telling me she can't get on Zoom, and I have no idea who she is, and she's being very vague when I ask her who. This is weird. Well, it is because other people have been able to log right in, so... Hey, Pam or Rob or, or Bob, are we able to maybe go to the next agenda item and come back to this, or is that not proper? Well, because we don't know the problem, Larry, is that we don't know what the public wants to get into here, so we can't. But if they keep trying to get on for agenda item six and come back to that? Well, we see, the problem is we have to be open to the public, even if somebody doesn't have an interest in a particular agenda item, because it is a public hearing. Well, so they can call in, though. Yeah, Bob, I was going to suggest they, sh they could easily call in. I mean, a techno technology issue on their behalf isn't really, shouldn't be our so, issue. Councilor Nicastro, Councilor Nicastro said she tried calling in and asked for a participant ID number. See, that's what we've got to be sure of. Is it, is it a problem, a technolo technology problem on the, on the applicant, I mean, on the, on, the, on, the, on, on the participant's end, or is it on our end? That's what we have to be sure of. We have to have public access. Yeah, and it's weird. Someone named Angela keeps texting me about this, and I have no idea who they are. Can you ask her to identify herself? Oh, I have, and she's being very vague about it. She says, oh, I met you last year from Brockton this year. Wow, sounds like you got, well, we, maybe we don't want to know. Well, yeah, why is she emailing you? Um, how, how'd she have my number, even? You're, you're a popular guy, Ed. And uh, the council said she's using the posted agenda. Um... Rob sent her a new link. I, I've got a phone call. I got to go silent. I think we're going to have to postpone. Um, can you get into... I was able to get in through my phone. Without any sort of password or anything, uh, Risa? Yeah, I just went into my phone. Um, the meeting ID and the passcode that's on the meeting uh, under the link, I just used that under the phone number. 
and it just let me right in. Frank. Dial the phone number. Go ahead. Um, I'm not sure which one you would even dial here. So you would dial the first one that says US. Um, three, one, two. Yeah, three, one, two, six, two, six, six, two, six, six, six seven, nine, nine. What am I doing? Seeing if you get, if it. And wants me to enter my meeting ID followed by comma. What's the meeting ID? Um, the meeting ID is 844. 844. Yeah. 518. 518 7253. What's my participant ID? Passcode? Yeah, it's the three four oh, nine. Four. No, it's actually the one below the ID, below the webinar ID. Yeah, oh nine six five seven one. Just that is the participant. That's oh nine six five seven one seven one. Ah. Keeps asking me, enter, enter your participant ID. Just keep moving that. That's the number above, the 340467, Pam? 340467. Now I've entered the meeting. He's in the meeting. So it work. Okay, so are we in agreement that we have public access then? Is that what we're saying? You have public access by phone. Yes. I can hear you perfectly. I just tried it as well. I got in on the phone as well. Okay. Okay. Can I hang up? Rob? Yeah, he, you oh, can he's hang up now. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? That's. That's um. I think we've all gotten in by phone pretty easily. It's not difficult to get in. It's not. Okay. All right. Is now why is why are some selected few muted? Do we know? You can unmute yourself. You should be able to unmute yourself. Rob? Yes, sir. Are you com so are you co comfortable as well that we have public access then? Um, you I'm should muted. be able to drive right through and that is not happening. Um, given our litigious society, um, and I got another email from Councilor I Castro. Wow. Um, does that mean she can't get on? Did she try calling him? Okay. 
sent me a shot of the of the agenda and what she was entering. I believe the last item is her award. But nobody else has attempted to call in. No, and, and nobody shows up as calling in either. Well, Frank hung up. Well, um, if, if we proceed, we should be prepared to be challenged. I don't want to do that. Rob, procedurally, what happens here? Does item oh, seven, who is, eight? Who is Jeff Perkins? He's, he's with uh, the applicant that's up right now. Oh, he just, because he just dialed right in. Yes. So why could he dial in and nobody else can? That's a good question. Yeah, and I think it's weird this person, Angela, keeps trying to get me to call her and I'm not going to call her because I called her from my house phone and just made a bunch of different noises. Kind of Something's going on. Yeah. Rob, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Procedurally, if we were to stop the meeting, um, is it just items six, seven, and eight that would need to be discussed at a future date? Uh, potentially. Yeah, I think we can assume that we had we had but, continuity up till now. Well, and, and but but be, be forewarned that um, the E Street subdivision was of particular concern to Councilor Nicastro, and Councilor Nicastro has been one of the people that has not been able to get into the meeting, although we did. But she knew comments. she was she knew she was going to be late for that portion of it. And that's why she sent those comments also. OK, yeah. so that might be the the issue. So I would think that maybe we finish Main Street since they are on and then um, postpone the, the remainder. And, and uh, do we know that no one else is trying how do we know? I mean, if we don't have public access, I mean, doesn't it apply right. to all the agenda? Susan's in. Susan's in? Yep. Oh, is there she is. Okay. I mean, how do we go forward with any items? I don't mean to belabor this, but how do we go forward with any agenda items if we're not convinced that we have public access? Well, well we, with, with we do Councilor now. With Castro coming on, I, I think we're... Um, we know that people can get on now. Mm -hmm. Are you suggesting to complete the agenda then? Um, yeah. Yeah, I think so. Yep. Very good. Okay. Well, apologize for the delay. Agenda item number six, the site plan approval. It's property at 4 Main Street. It's retail marijuana. Applicant is uh, Atlantic Medicinal Partners. Representative is attorney Phil Silverman. Uh, good evening, Attorney Silverman. Good evening, and thank you for having us here tonight. Um, so, uh, again, I represent uh, Atlantic Medicinal Partners. I'm from the law firm of Vicente Cedarburg. We're seeking site plan approval for a retail marijuana facility at 4 Main Street in accordance with Article 3, Section 27-24.4 of the zoning bylaws. Uh, and this applicant has uh, a host community agreement that was executed back in September of 2018. It received a special permit from the uh, Board of Appeals on July 28th, uh, 2020. There were a couple of conditions to that. It had to operate no earlier than 8 a.m., no later than 8 p.m., and deliveries had to occur between 8 a.m. and 8 p.m., and also that there be off-street parking, which included 12 designating parking spaces, I'm going to get into that a little further as we get into the site plan. Um, it, is it okay if I share my screen so we can uh, I can show you the site plan? Oh, uh, please, please do. do. Right. All right. Let's see. Can everybody see that? 
Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Fantastic. Okay. Um. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wrong plan. No, and he's sharing his screen, and I lost my screen. So. Is that? Is that? Okay, I'm back. That's the one that. Um... That's four main. Okay. Yeah. All right. Go ahead. Thank. Pardon me. You bet. All right. Um. So the property is at four main street. Uh, but the entry to the building is actually through the rear of the building. Um, and and uh, if you can see Court Street, there's an entry into the parking lot from Court Street. Um, there are no changes that are proposed to, this, to the existing conditions. The only change, again, the same lands landscaping, same lighting, the only modification is that the 12 parking spaces that are nearest to Court Street are going to be reserved for customers of this particular business. And there's going to be signage that specifies that this is for customers of Atlantic Medicinal Partners only. Um, we will have our employees park in a municipal lot nearby, the, the Mayor Bill, Bill Carpenter garage. Uh, they'll be reimbursed for their parking. Again, we're just trying to maximize all the space we have. Um, we have provided a traffic impact statement that shows that at peak hour, uh, you could expect 28 uh, visits from customers. It's, again, this is peak hour. Um, and this can be accommodated pretty easily at this lot. Uh, just by way of background, my firm is an all cannabis law firm. It's all we do all around the country. We represent a hundred different customers in Massachusetts and we've done this a lot. I have information for you that would tell you that the average time for a dispensary transaction in Massachusetts mm -hmm is between seven and 10 minutes. To be conservative, we use 15 minutes. So what that means is you can do, each space on the lot can handle four customers an hour. So our 12 spaces can actually handle 48 customers. And again, our peak is only expected to be 28 customers. So we believe that there is plenty of parking uh, that's, he that's here. Again, there are other spaces in this lot. Um, they're just not designated and reserved for us. Uh, but with those spaces, our busiest hours are expected to be Thursday evening, Friday evening, Saturday and Sunday. And those are times when these spaces, other spaces here are not likely to be used. These are the other uh, 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 entities in this building are basically offices that don't use this, um, you know, during those busy times for us. So it, it's a good fit in terms of parking. Um, Loading uh, at this facility, we do deliveries from the wholesalers, and this company itself actually has its own manufacturing facility uh, that, that manufactures out in uh, Fitchburg, Massachusetts, and the deliveries are about two to three times a week. They're at random times, unmarked vehicles. They're generally sprinter vans, um, and we, again, it's randomized times. We don't want anybody to understand a pattern as to when we do deliveries. And your typical delivery, uh, there's a lot of coordination between the drivers and the receiving uh, you know, operator here. That's just all according to Cannabis Control Commission rules. So that what really happens here is uh, the company knows that the, that the delivery van is on the way, it comes in, the, the, uh, it's unloaded and brought into the front door of the facility. It all in all takes about two to three minutes. It's a really quick process. I'm um, going to move now to the floor plan. I assume this looks somewhat familiar. I know this board has had quite a bit of experience um, with these types of facilities. Uh, so this facility has the same types of access controls that you're used to seeing. Uh, customers enter through a main door. They have to show their ID the first time outside the door. They get let in through the front door. They have to then show their ID a second time to security uh, before they are again buzzed into the main sales area. They're met by a sales agent there. Uh, the sales agent, you know, helps them uh, make their order. They fill the order. Uh, the ID is checked for a third time at these point of sale stations uh, that are inside. And then the customer receives uh, the order and uh, leaves through uh, a separate exit door uh, out into the parking area. Um, the company's security plan has been uh, presented to the Brockton police chief. It's been signed off on. 
And the security, without belaboring again, because I know you've seen this, this is all mandated by state law. You've got exterior cameras, so we have a 360 degree view around the building, interior cameras in every single part of this building where marijuana is handled or stored and all doors and all windows. Uh, there's a primary alarm system. There is a backup alarm system in case the primary is compromised. Uh, we have a seed to sale tracking system. Every bit of inventory, inventory is barcoded when it gets in here and it's continually weighed and entered again into the inventory system. If something that weighed an ounce last week only weighs a half an ounce next week, your inventory system lets you know, you go back through the cameras, you find out who diverted that product and you terminate the employee immediately. No tolerance policy in Massachusetts for any kind of diversion of product. Um, we also have a vault in the back here of the facility. Um, that's where product is stored every night and then it's brought out again uh, every morning uh, to the sales floor. 24-7 um, off-site monitoring of this facility by security and every employee here is background checked. Um, the, the last piece that I wanna cover for you, uh, your, your bylaws ask for a transportation demand management plan. We call it an opening day plan, uh, which sort of covers the, especially the initial uh, period of time when there's generally, it might be a few more customers because of a curiosity factor. What we do um, in these situations for the first month, we have a police detail um, in the parking area. It just helps us to keep customers uh, orderly. Um, and, and then we also, for the first three months, have parking attendants out in that parking area, uh, just because it helps to get the customers to know where they're supposed to be to, to put them into those designated spaces so that your customer base becomes aware of how it works here. Um, we only generally do it for, for the first three months. If the police chief were concerned because it was particularly busy, we'd be happy to extend that as long as it's necessary. But to be honest, uh, most of the facilities in Massachusetts these days, you're not seeing the types of crowds that you saw um, initially. I know in good health uh, can get somewhat busy on certain afternoons. Um, we've, we've sort of taken a look at how things are going over there. The reality is, is by the time this, this facility gets up and moving, uh, there's gonna be quite a few of these facilities in Brockton and we think all of the crowds are largely gonna die down. Uh, and you're not going to have uh, any types of problems. So um, that's that's the basics of our plan. And is there anything else, any questions you have, or anything else I can tell you? Uh, I did have one question, Attorney Sobman. What, what is what was your approximate timeline on this, on your development? Um, so a little bit depends upon the licensing process because we still have to go and get an actual license. But let's just assume for the moment. Uh, that that were to happen in the next 60 days uh, from the city. Um, I, I think, you know, there's going to be some interior build out. There's still some additional part inspections that have to be done. I think you're 12 months away at the earliest from seeing this facility open. Okay. Thank you. Uh, any other, any other board members have any other questions, concerns? I have a, a couple questions. Um, how, how far is this from the dispensary that's, that's right down the street on Pleasant Street? Uh, I, I don't have uh, the exact distance. Um, what is what is the legal requirement between dispensaries? Five hundred is a minimum, right? Five hundred. Yep. It's. I don't believe it's within five hundred feet, though. Okay. Now we've we've approved a lot. What 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 happens if I mean do, do, what if happens if there are no licenses in the city available? So I know that's an issue, um, and I've been having some discussions with uh, Megan Bridges in the law office. Uh, there's, there's some questions about the, the status of licensing. Um, what we're seeking, the way the zoning was set up is that it says 25% of your licenses are supposed to be in the C3 district and 75% are supposed to be in the C2 district. Right now, you only have one in the C3 district. It's that other one that you just mentioned, uh, 73 to 75 Pleasant Street. So you're not at that 25% yet. So we've been operating and seeking to be the next one in the C3 district that would bring you up to the 25% that your zoning requires. So we think we fit in with your licensing and your zoning. That's something that we understand. Uh, we, we may get some pushback on and we're prepared to deal with that when we do. And, and we also, 
in, in the downtown area, we, we re required second floor. Um, this is not second floor. Well, actually, what I think your zoning says is, is it can't be ground floor. And this is actually below ground floor. I, 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 want, to, I want to interject something here. I just got a message from, from Mr. May uh, just, uh, just updating me. I don't know if anybody else got the message. Unfortunately, the public does not have access to this meeting, according to Mr. May. And that being the case, correct. We, we cannot continue the public hearing because the public cannot access. I'm not Mr. Technology, so I, I, I can't lend anything to that solution. I, I'm not even aware that we can't, but I I'm, I'm have to go by what Mr. May, the city planner says to me, the chairman, that we do not have public access and you can't have a public hearing without public access. Um, I'm afraid- I had, I had hoped that once uh, we saw that Councillor Nicastro could get in, that other people would be able to, but um, there's uh, at least five other people who have emailed, ah, emailed me uh, and they are not able to get in. So I, I would respectfully request that we continue this. Well, um, Attorney Tillman, we gave you a preview of the questions we're asking. <laughs> I mean, that's certainly helpful. Um, if, what I'm wondering, however, uh, I'm concerned about there, there's there's some a part of your process in Brockton requires uh, sort of being timely or first and before other applicants, and there's been some time delay. And I'm not casting any aspersion on anybody. I understand that COVID's been in the way and all of that. What I'm wondering though is if there's a way to to sort of schedule a second meeting without having to wait an additional 30 days for this. Right, we're gonna we're gonna address that now, sir. Um, Thank you. You're not, you're not the only you're not the only facility that's had had delays. Other other facilities have had delays as well. No doubt, no yeah. doubt. So, board members, if you could take a look at your calendars and see if Tuesday the 15th of December. Is That's the one you? day I can't make if there's any way we could do it another day. Then that <laughs> is the day we are going to choose, the 15th? No. <laughs> um, we can't do Mondays because of City Council uh, and Finance Committee. Wednesday is uh, Conservation Commission, so Thursday the 17th. Hold on a second. I think I've got... We've, let's see. Thursday the 17th. Let me... Let me, uh, you su Rob, you're suggesting Thursday the 17th? Yes, sir, I am. Let me grab my calendar. I think there may have been a Zoom security update between the time we've made the meeting and start, and then when we transferred the meeting over to a date, and that may have set things out of whack um, so for those of you who are on and listening, I apologize for that. And those of you who are watching at home, uh, we will be, uh, hey, God, he had a, he, um, cable had an issue. He told me. Um, he dropped out. Yes. Um, oh, I, I see him there, but yeah. Yes. Mr. Palagi. Okay. I just, just for clarity now, just if we move, uh, to the 17th, I just for clarity now, that's just to hear these three items. Um, we're not going to add anything to the agenda now. I, I, I don't think that we should, no. We will not add new things to the agenda. My question to the board is we don't know if people had wanted to attend the previous oh, yeah. uh, agenda items. Yeah. So we might just for, I, for I think that's very suspenders, I even think though the people who have already been through the process. I'd like to probably make a motion adjourn and, and then go into executive session. I think it's probably the best way to discuss this. Well, we unfortunately we can't go into an executive session unless it was in the agenda and for a very Got specific um, series okay, of but... activities of which that this would not be mm -hmm. one of them. All right. Well, if you hear, I mean, if you hear from people that wanted to attend the previous sessions, agenda well, items, we could review them, I guess, but um, that be fair? If, if the 17th works, 
we should pencil that in. And then first thing tomorrow morning, we will contact our law office and see what they have to say. Uh, yeah. And whether, you know, obviously we have asked you, the board has asked your questions. It's just a matter of hearing other people's, if there is any other testimony to be had, um, worst case scenario. Does that mean, uh, just for clarity, Rob, does that mean that this presenter would have to represent this project? In an abridged form, yes. Okay. Um, and, and does that give you, on the administrative side, does that give you enough days for public notice for a meeting, a meeting next, next Thursday night? Only need 48 uh, hours. Correct. Wow. Okay. Yeah, I guess it does. And we're continuing it to a date certain, so. Well, I mean, let's pull the other members. Is everybody yeah. else comfortable moving to next Thursday night for these three items? Yes. Yeah, 17th yes. Yep. Okay. And I will send out new links to everyone. All right. Well, with, with apologies, Attorney uh, Silverman. No problem. Thank you very much. Appreciate all of your I efforts. I want you to know you did a you did a very you did an excellent job on your presentation. Okay. I Thank guess you'll, you. you'll be in good form for next Thursday. I'm sorry. All right. Uh, okay, Rob, do you want to, uh, so we uh, motion to adjourn then, or do you have? Well, mo motion to continue the meeting. Motion to continue. Well, we want to continue. Do we want to continue this? I guess we want to, con are we going to Motion to continue this? agenda item six, seven, and eight till the 17th. I second that motion. Uh, just for clarity, we're going to, we're going to continue. We, we're going to continue the item six that we're halfway through then? Yes, I would think so. All right. And and, and at the minimum, it is six, seven, and eight, and hopefully, yeah. the others um, will we'll get some clarification from the solicitor's office. Okay, uh, motion yeah. made and seconded to uh, continue uh, agenda item six, seven, eight to the six p.m. on the evening of Thursday, the seventeenth. Uh, roll call vote on the motion. Larry Hassan. Yes. Tony Gonzalez. Tony. I am on mute. Yes, sorry. Okay. Are you voting in the affirmative? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Reggie Thomas? Yes. Greg Pina? Yes. Apologies, is a yes. I guess uh, motion motion to uh, adjourn then. Okay. Again, right. folks, I apologize for the uh, technical problem. Um, we will send out new links. We'll post a new link on the agendas and uh, make that also available to um, the counselors. Um, nice. And we will see you all back here on the 17th at 6 p.m. All right, thank, thank you. you. Good night all, and, go Patriots. Good night. Happy Hanukkah, everyone. Thank you. Happy Hanukkah.